Why don't we go ahead and get started? I think Sue said um, the attendance through July has not been quite as many people as we might typically have, but I'm so grateful for all of you who are setting aside this time to continue this conversation about the Psalms. I uh, just wanted to do a little brief overview. I assume most of you probably have been to the majority of Sue's classes. Yeah, you're the faithful followers and supporters <laughs> of the journey class, so thank you. Um, so just, you know, noting that all the books of the Bible are very important um, because each one is inspired by God, but there are books that draw us in time and time again to their strong encouragement, the powerful teachings, and their practical wisdoms. And that's certainly what we find in the book of Psalms. Uh, the Psalms with their poetic Imagery help us express our emotions to God and see the many ways that God works during the best and the worst times in our lives. And we heard um, Leah addressing that today in her sermon and in her message with the kids. So you've been so blessed to have Dr. Sue Fry with you, PhD in Old Testament, so it doesn't get any better than that, and encouraging us to see the texture of the Psalms in the fabric of our lives. So I hope you have been experiencing that somewhat through this series and been able to reflect during the week um, on how God uh, enters into and weaves in and out of the fabric and the texture of your own lives. So welcome. So what you've been through already um, are these first four classes. You looked extensively at Psalm 23 and then the Psalms in the seasons of life when it's disorienting. And that's kind of been an overarching theme is the, the starting an orientation and disorientation and then reorientation as we look at the, the Psalms as a collection of writings. And then last week was this communal lament, reorientation and Thanksgiving. Today, I'm going to kind of touch on, and it's not part of Sue's, um, you know, the, the flow of what she's wanting to share with you. This is kind of a little interlude of um, <clears throat> Anne's uh, thoughts on the Psalms. And because I'm such, um, I appreciate, you know, art and the way scripture uh, and God's uh, presence is woven and we see it in other forms of uh, art and literature and culture. So that's what I want to lift up with us today. And then next week will be out of the depths, heart cries to God. Um, Leah will be preaching on Psalm 130. Okay, that Psalm, you know, out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord, O Lord, hear my cry. And then the last week is the July 28th when we wrap up. So praying with the Psalms and the Psalms and music. So you'll have a guest musician here in Tim Evers um, to kind of, you know, listen because these are songs. There's written songs, but also songs that people sang on their way up to Jerusalem or uh, as cries of lament. So let us uh, open with a word of prayer. Before we do that, can everybody online hear me okay? You're, you're good, Judy? Yeah, okay, great. And you see the slides. All right, well, let's uh, join in this opening prayer together. Pray, holy and majestic God, shine your light into our hearts and minds through our study of the Psalms. Breathe into us wisdom, curiosity, and love, that we may seek your truth in holy conversation with these texts and with each other. In Christ's name we pray, amen. So just a little review. Um, I'm just interested in, in what has stood out to you, what you've taken note of, um, continuing to maybe wrestle with or question or embrace. Um, so what has surprised you about this study of the Psalms? Did you know them well beforehand or anything stood out for you? She always brings us back to the idea of trust. Hmm. Regardless of where we are in the um, sequence of the lessons, it comes back to the trust. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Marianne. Yes, um, just I, you know, in the past, um, you know, just using the Psalms kind of 
space to be back, like you said, is like a structure for prayer in times of like sadness or times of like, you know, where are you in my life? But yet I trust, you know, mm -hmm. so just the model. And uh, the Psalms do capture that whole range of feelings um, and enable us, I think you know, encourage us also to give voice to what we're experiencing in our lives. I always try to keep that in mind as I'm leading worship and particularly praying that not everybody is in a happy, joyful, easy place. That a lot of people are struggling, they're fearful, they're angry, they're hurt, they're suffering. Um, so yeah, trying to, to hold all of that in, in our communal worship and prayer together. Yeah, yeah just to add, when I was younger, it was like, you know, you, you, I was taught that, you know, you give thanks to God and you pray, but, you know, learning the songs, like in the past, really, like Leah was saying today, like really opened me up to like it, it, that I can pray and bring my sadness to God and, mm -hmm. you know, my questions to God, but yet, you know, express mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Particularly so because we see on the cross, you know, Jesus asking, you know, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why am I not experiencing your presence with me? So it does, it really does open up, you know, that kind of floodgate of we can be angry, <laughs> we can ask questions, we can be really, uh, you know, grieving before God, and God knows it all and, and holds all of that, and, and then returns the trust that we can trust in God to, to meet us in even those most difficult places. Anybody online? Thoughts? Not to put you on the spot, but <laughs> I, just to acknowledge that I remember you're there. <laughs> So how do the songs intersect with the fabric and texture of your life? Do you find that on a day-to-day -day basis, um, you're experiencing that and just lifting the prayers to God? Welcome, Carolyn. Uh, in what ways do you experience or better understand God in the Psalms? Have you found uh, any revelations or insights in addition to what you've already shared? I read through them a lot and especially at times when I am hurting and it helps me to realize I'm not alone because this is a condition that people have felt through the ages and that God has been there mm -hmm. for them and will be there for me. Right. Yeah, what we're experiencing, I mean, it's unique in our lives, but it's kind of universal to the human situation and the experiences that we have in life. Yeah. Um, I think in, I was listening to the recordings from Sue's classes, and she offered an encouragement to pray with the Psalms, that you can read, you know, one or two a day, and then you can, there's a lot of them, 150, there's a lot, but you can work your way through the Psalms, and there certainly are many devotionals that will help you do that and kind of lift up insights or then offer a closing prayer after you've read the Psalm. <coughs> Excuse me. So how does the exploration of this orientation to disorientation and back to orientation help your understanding of the Psalms? Was that um, a new way of kind of structuring them and look, and was that helpful? Yeah, and what was it that Sue was able to lift up that was insightful for you? Had you thought of the Psalms in that way? That, yeah. yeah. And the whole cyclical nature of it. Mm -hmm. Just you know, going from here down and then over and then up and then realizing that you could be over there and then down again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I found that very helpful. Yeah, and I've read some commentary where, because um, we start with the, the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, um, and then there's similarities and it kind of parallels in the Psalms and you see these five sections in the Psalms mm -hmm. that kind of relate to Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, number. So, um, you know, that's interesting. So a lot of biblical scholars have done so much uh, uh, research uh, and exploration of what the arrangement of the Psalms, what meaning does that have? Because sometimes we think of the Bible coming down as this, you know, canon, this, you know, like united, you know, one thing, and it's not. You know, it's all these books of the Bible and different types of literature that someone has arranged and put in certain order. So what is the meaning? And we know it's a theology that comes out through that, that they're trying to share with us as well. 
And I love how it just shows the human experience, you know, and that you're not alone. Um, others have been there and so on. That it, it makes it, you know, just being younger, it, it just, it makes it, you know, when I was younger and then after reading the Psalms, it's like, oh, it's okay to express these emotions. Other people have been there, you know, and, and I'm never alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, particularly our anger. You have some, well, I can't be angry with God, but God knows you're angry. So <laughs> you're not telling God anything new. Yes, me. I was going to say about that uh, orientation, disorientation, <laughs> reorientation. It's so much like in therapy. Mm -hmm. All of us feel like I'll never be the same again. This thing has happened to me and I'm never going to be the same again. And it's reassuring to see in the Psalms too. You won't be the same, but you'll orient it and you will yeah. be made even better and mm -hmm. changed and mm -hmm. it will be good. Mm -hmm. you know? So that re being able to visualize that being orientation is great. Yeah. And I thought that was so helpful in a response. I guess Sue asked you a particular question in one of the weeks mm -hmm. and how you were able to frame what it is that you do in counseling one on one with how we can understand the Psalms. Yeah, in that way too, that you need to integrate those experiences into your life so that you can go, and it's not going to be the same. I mean, you can't go back to what life was after whatever experience or tragedy happened, but you can process it, understand it, and then move on. Yeah. yeah thank you for that insight. It was very helpful. Any other thoughts? So um, today we're going to look at seeing the Psalms in art and culture. And first, I want to give you an opportunity to see that video again that we shared in worship. Mm -hmm. So it comes from Work of the People, which is an um, uh, organization that we frequently will use some of their videos. They, they have do a beautiful job of doing a, a visual uh, exploration of scripture um, mm -hmm. to present that to us. So, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And that comes from, um, you know, Jesus lips on the cross and recorded both in Matthew 27, but then also in Mark's gospel. And this is, you know, one of the words that he speaks, one of the phrases that he speaks from the cross. So there's seven of them that are highlighted in the um, gospels. So we're going to watch the, the video. It runs about two and a half minutes. Um, and oh, before that, I was wanting to read Psalm 22. So did I give, okay, so who's reader? You're one, and who's two? Two and three. Okay, so let's listen to the whole psalm because it's much longer than what we use in you know, the call to worship. It's fairly short and responsive. So this is all of Psalm 22. Okay. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our ancestors trust, they trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried, and we were saved, and were saved. In you they trusted, and were not put to shame. But I am a worm, and not human, scorned by others, and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make malice at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth. And since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs are all around me. A company of evil do doers encircles me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, do not be far away. O oh my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion, from the horns of the wild oxen, you have rescued me. 
and then Susan, I will tell you of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction, the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. <clears throat> May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. Thank you. Um, thanks to our readers. And, and this psalm has been very closely linked to Jesus because of his death on the cross and um, some of the, like the dividing my clothes. Um, and what he quotes, you know, this psalm on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Um, and that, you know, he has done it. So Christ has accomplished what we could not do for ourselves on the cross. Um, so as we listen, and the psalms are meant to be heard. Um, so, that, you know, maybe as you're praying through them, you want to read them out loud or find recordings of them. Or, um, it's wonderful to have readers because it just kind of washes over you in a way that reading the text on the paper um, might not necessarily enter into your uh, heart and mind. So um, the creators of this video, you know, they read through the psalm, they prayed about it, they probably read through it again and thought, how do we in two and a half minutes, you know, capture the feeling, the essence of this cry, my God, my God. So, and uh, praying, my God, please let this work. <laughs> Here's the video. <laughs> My God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? I am in pain. Why don't you hear my cries? Why don't you answer? I am scared and anxious. I cannot rest. I am so worn out. You are my creator. Do not be far from me. Trouble is near and there is no one to help me. I feel surrounded with no way out. The fear is withering me. I lay in the dust of death. God, please help me. Don't be far from me. You are my strength. Come quickly. Deliver me. Hear my cry for help. Rescue me. Save me. I cannot be alive without you. Rough spot at the end there. 
So how does this video enhance your understanding of Psalm 22 and its message? Was it helpful? In what ways? Are some of you visual learners like I am? <laughs> yeah, it helps to. But sometimes when people put visions uh, or you know, visuals before you attach to a psalm like this, it's not what you were thinking. <laughs> so some, it's like reading a novel, you know, and you picture the characters a certain way, and then you see the film, you're like, no, that's just <laughs> not, that, that actor is not the right person. So uh, did it, was it helpful to hear things? Yeah. Yes, Judy. <laughs> I just, I was struck during the sermon and struck again now about that scene where that woman is down in the dirt and talks about the depths. Mm -hmm. And yet what she's totally surrounded with is what speaks to me clearer than anything about God and that's nature. Mm -hmm. it was that, and I, and unless I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this on a, on a laptop screen, but it just looked like a reminder of no matter how low and how in the dirt and depths we are, that God is right down there with us. Mm -hmm. That yep. was one, you know, one thing that just, that struck me. Thank she you. starts inside, you know, looking out at a little bit of nature. I think I saw a tree there, but then that next scene is right out there. And, um, may not feel God there, but the rem the reminder that, that even when we're not feeling it, God is right there with us. Yeah, uh, thank you. And, and that speaks to the trust that Mariana mentioned at the beginning, you know, and we need to remind ourselves, even though I'm going through a really horrible experience, a horrible season in my life, something really difficult and painful, I can trust that God is there. And sometimes we need, we may not be able to feel that or pray that and be reminded, remind ourselves about God's presence and love and for us, that if we're in a community of faith, we can have other people praying for us um, and being that reminder that you are not alone, that God is there with you. And whether you know, you're inside looking out at nature, or experiencing it, or in the dirt as she is, um, God is there with you. And God has been in those places. Thanks, Judy. Any, uh, yes, Pamela. I just expand on what Judy said, um, that she was in the center and then the flowers around. Mm -hmm. I like at the end, like she's she's in the center, she's in the dirt, but yet those flowers are all around. Um, but you know, at the end she picks just the one, right? Mm -hmm. Like the lone flower and she takes that with her. So even though she's in the dirt, she's holding on to the one important thing, which was God. And she's taking that, she gets up and she knows that that flower is with her. So I don't know, that just touched me. Yeah, yeah. no, very much so, yeah. And that she's even in the dirt, um, covered with dirt, there's still a uh, surrounding of beauty of God's nature and creation. Yes. The thing I, I put together this time around is the bird on the branch. And it looked like a fledgling that was unsure, um, you know, because it was about to take its first flight. And think about that if you're a bird and you've never done that, the amount of trust mm -hmm. that it takes to take that leap of faith that you're going to fly. And that, that is something that I hadn't mm -hmm. connected with the first, first time, time around, yeah, yeah. you know, that, that there will be that sense of soaring, soaring and joy mm -hmm. after the trust and after the faith. Yeah. And it does help to see these videos again. So yes. if you're interested in them, just remember that on Thursday, Lynn will put out, you know, things to watch. And at the very bottom of the emails, um, I think on Thursday and Sunday, she'll have things to watch. And there'll be links there so you can see the previous Sunday service and just, you know, go to the time that you think the video was shared and you'll be able to watch it again through the recording of worship. And the hands, we're thinking it was a woman, but maybe it wasn't. Huh? Okay. I mean, uh -huh. the hand didn't necessarily look feminine. Yeah. So maybe it I, was not. Yeah. Just a thought. I just thought about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just how she he gets yeah, up at the end it's not like wow i'm ready to go let's go <laughs> right. but it's sort of like all right let me just get up and go yeah and i think that that's important too mm -hmm. and i see most of you have been in that place where you just want to get in bed and pull the covers <laughs> up or, or lay in the dirt and just disappear um and something needs to enter your life 
um, and be that instrument. Um, and often it's counseling. You know, you have the therapist come into the situation with you um, and provide, you know, offer some healing. But there's something that needs to encourage you to get up and be alive and re-engage because we probably all know people who have not done that um, and they suffer and, and their lives um, kind of wither away because they're not re-engaging and entering in. So thanks be to God for our counselors and our therapists. <laughs> and for Thank friends you. and for family and, friends, and for yes. kids and for dogs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen, all those things, <laughs> right, or gardening, whatever it is that gets yeah. you up um, and to re-engage, yeah. So um, any ways that the images hindered your experience of the song? Uh, anything that you would change about the video? I should have asked Brian because he said afterwards, well, I'm glad I opened the Bible and I read it too because I would have missed, but I didn't hear what I missed. So if you're always mm -hmm. going to do that, you have to cut something and yes. put on another thing. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, and do you remember some of the words that were captured in the video? What, what she, she or he, the person crying out for, searching for? Remember some of the, the rescue me, save me, yeah, hear me, oh God, heal me, come quickly, deliver me, uh, and at the end, that encouragement to be alive. So um, you looked at Psalm 23 quite in depth, uh, and there is a lot of artwork that captures this psalm. Um, this, of course, is from our very own chapel, uh, the Robert Young Chapel, in honor of uh, Dr. Dr. Reverend, Reverend Dr. Bob Young. Um, and see the good shepherd, but also there's this, again, this parallel with Jesus Christ as our good shepherd. So he's carrying the one little lamb um, it has a staff and then the other sheep are there and apparently sheep are not the smartest of animals <laughs> so when one gets lost and we have that you know the parable of the lost sheep and the shepherd goes off you know leaves the night you know and goes searching for the one that as a sheep or a little lamb whatever gets uh, frightened and, and is apart from the flock they start to shake and they get so trembling and terrified that they can't move and so the shepherd has to actually literally pick up the lamb and put it, you know, carry it in an arm or over the shoulders if it's a larger. Yeah, they actually can't walk. Like it's not, you can't herd them back again. <laughs> Apparently you have to actually pick it up. So that's why you often see that image of a shepherd carrying the sheep over his shoulders if it's larger in his arms, if it's a smaller one. And, and this probably is one of the best known passages in the Old Testament. If you ask people, you know, what's your favorite passage in the Bible? Um, many people will say yeah. Psalm 23. It just, it's well known and it provides incredible comfort uh, for us. Um, I was officiating for a funeral service on Friday for Fred Dixon and often families uh, will use this Psalm to recite. And the other Psalm is Psalm 121 from where does my help come? You know, it comes from the Lord. So um, what, what, what is it about this psalm, do you think, that gives people comfort, especially when they're grieving? Yeah, me. Just knowing that he's present with us mm -hmm. and all that he is leading us and guiding us. And I had an English professor who said his son had, one of his son's friends had died when he was in college, so a young man. He said it was like being slapped in the face when he went to the funeral. They did use the old wording for Psalm 23 because he didn't want anything to change. He wanted the eternal. Yeah. There's something about that we know it so well. It's so reassuring. Mm -hmm. We have the words that we know really well. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's one sort of the things that makes me sad that there are people growing up now who aren't part of a church, you know, mm -hmm. who don't know and will not have that familiarity with a piece of scripture like this. You um, didn't have to learn it. <laughs> it's been, yeah. it's just, yeah. You just, you hear it so many times, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think for me, when mother died, the part that said I walked through mm -hmm. the valley of the shadow of death, and I had never thought about the through, mm -hmm. but it gave me great comfort. Yeah. That through the valley of the shadow of death. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. And because there is a shadow in the valley, it means there's a source of light that God is still there. 
shining on us, watching over us, providing, protecting, guiding us. Yeah. And, and the, you know, the, the encouragement to be alive, get, get through the valley. Uh, and what support do you need to get yourself through that terrible time? Here's another one, and this is uh, the Good Shepherd. It's a watercolor. Sorry, I went too far. It's a uh, watercolor painting um, by a pastor, and his name is Cliff Gleason. He lives in New Hampshire. Um, uh, and I wrote, so even though most people rarely see a shepherd tending sheep, in Psalm 23 continues to minister the power and grace of God. Um, so this is a very pastoral scene. You know, we don't have the close-up of the shepherd or the sheep, um, but again, you know, it's um, leading me beside the still waters and the green pastures and the provision that God offers us in that metaphor of a shepherd. Uh, and this is one, so this, you know, centers more on uh, and is lifting up Christ as the good shepherd and holding that lamb in his arms. This is by uh, artist uh, Winfield Bevins. Uh, he's a minister and artist, uh, internationally recognized, also a church leader. Um, he works at Asbury Theological Seminary, uh, author of several books. Um, and he writes, uh, we seem to have an inner sense of the tenderness and care that a shepherd gives to a sheep. This image makes sense to us as we think about the gentle and protective love the Lord as for all God's children and the sheep of God's pasture. So as you think of Psalm 23, and it may change, do you, do you focus more on the pastoral setting and the provision or on that kind of intimate personal care of a shepherd for a particular sheep? Or, or do you come get both? Does one resonate with you more than the other? That's very comforting to look at. Something beautiful and peaceful. There it is, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Jesus bending down yeah. to scoop us up. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think about the video, you know, with the person coming up out of the dirt and the grave, and you know, it's that you know, Christ bringing us up and out and uh, back into life. I like that it's not a traditional, um, fair-skinned. Jesus. <laughs> yes, thank you, Jenny. Uh -huh. and, and that's another thing to keep in mind when someone comes to teach you a class is what images are they using? Is it a blonde hair, uh, blue eyed Jesus, or something more universal? Yeah. So, um, Psalm 23, also in the culture. So, in the movie Titanic, um, uh, it's, let's see, produced in 1997, Kate Winslet and Leonardo DiCaprio, directed by James Cameron. And does anyone want to hazard a guess as to when Psalm 23 is heard in this movie? Were they singing it as they were going down? Bingo! Yep. So here's a scene from the uh, top of, of the deck uh, when it's beginning to sink. And the pastor, uh, the reverend, um, starts to recite the psalm and other scripture. So the priest, who Jack and Rose see when the ship is nearing her end, was a real person named Father Thomas Biles. He stayed on the ship to help passengers escape and give absolution and prayed with more than 100 people. So it's remarkable. And then, of course, you had the musicians, you know, that quartet of musicians. Most of you have seen the movie, I guess. Yeah, they stayed as well. Um, I mean, remarkable courage and dedication and trust in God to, you know, uh, hold even this terrible tragedy. Yeah. And another one is uh, John Wayne and Catherine Hepburn and Rooster Cogburn. And uh, she uh, is like in the face of danger, she starts reciting Psalm 23 to her attacker. And George W. Bush, um, after 9-11, uh, that evening, he offered a short address to the nation, and he quoted you know, this verse, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Um, and it, it lifts up to us that God is near. God is watching over us, uh, very present, even though we're going through this incredible uh, national tragedy. 
Similar thing, you know, with the uh, assassination attempt uh, yesterday of uh, former President Donald Trump, it's just, you know, the whole nation is shocked um, and outraged uh, at this violence to our leaders. You know, these are people who, um, you know, step in and volunteer to, to lead the nation in a very visible, vulnerable way. Um, and so we, we need to offer more protection and prayers for their safety. So Psalm 23, just a little review. Um, in these contexts, Psalm 23 is used straightforwardly and uncritically to inspire hope and trust in difficult circumstances, as was presumably the case in the Psalm's original setting. Uh, perhaps this expression of confidence in divine protection and blessing accounts for the Psalm's continued appeal. Um, so in what ways does this Psalm capture and describe God's protection, blessing, and goodness? And we, we probably covered that pretty well unless you wanna add anything. And have there been times in your life when you've experienced the comfort and care of God as your good shepherd? There are a lot of different ways that we imagine God, um, you know, the lamb of God, the king, the creator. Um, so good shepherd is one of those images. Is this a particular one that resonates for you? Well, as mm -hmm. you were saying, mm -hmm. I was thinking about it, the shepherd holding the sheep that is so scared they don't know what to do and they can't move. And yeah. you think of the times in your life you've been like, ah, mm -hmm. now what? Just, yeah. yeah, at wit's end and trembling and yeah, unsure what's the next step, right? So we often kind of get frozen. Yes. Yeah. But mm -hmm. to know that comfort that mm -hmm. even during that time. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah. Even when we're paralyzed with fear or whatever, mm -hmm. yeah. God's there to scoop us up. Um, last week, you looked at some artwork um, with the exile, the Jews, and, out of, and uh, the prisoners, and um, Babylon. And so in a similar way, I just want to look at some more artwork um, for different psalms. And this is a, a beautiful, um, uh, an artist who does beautiful works for uh, the Hebrew scripture, so our Old Testament. She's New York City artist, Barbara Wolf, uh, a foremost illuminator of biblical text. So she'll take a biblical text, not so much uh, maybe illustrate it as uh, illuminate, as kind of bring out what is the meaning that she experiences in the, the uh, scripture text. So um, readers for 100, did I do 100 for? Mm. Yes, oh good. Cool. <laughs> okay. Ready? Did you want to split it up? No, I'm good. Okay. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty, wrapped in light as with a garment. You stretch out the heavens like a tent. You set the beams of your chambers on the waters. You make the clouds your chariot. You ride on the wings of the wind. You make the wing winds your messengers, fire and flame your ministers. You set the earth on its foundations so that it shall never be shaken. You cover it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. As you rebuke, they flee. At the sound of your thunder, they take to flight. They rose up to the mountains, ran down to the valleys, to the place that you appointed for them. You set a boundary that they may not pass, so that they may not again cover the earth. You make springs gush forth in the valleys. They flow between the hills, giving drink to every wild animal. The wild asses quench their thirst. By the streams, the birds of the air have their habitation. They sing among the branches. From your lofty abode, you water the mountains. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of your work. You cause the grass to grow for the cattle, and plants for people to use, to bring forth food from the earth, and wine to gladden the human heart, oil to make the face shine, and bread to strengthen the human heart. The trees of the Lord are watered abundantly, cedars of Lebanon that he planted. In them the birds build their nests, the stork has its home in the fir trees. The high mountains are for the wild goats, the rocks are a refuge for the cones. You have made the moon to mark the seasons. The sun knows its time for setting. You make darkness, 
and it is night, when all the animals of the forest come creeping out. The young lions roar for their prey, seeking their food from God. When the sun rises, they withdraw and lie down in their dens. People go out to their work and to their labor until the evening. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there, living things both small and great. There go the ships and the levos of the brother. Levine. Thank mm -hmm. you. That you formed to support it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. And when you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, <clears throat> they are created. And you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Who looks on the earth and it trembles? Who touches the mountains and they smoke? I will sing to the Lord for as long as I live. I will praise to my God while I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Let sinners be consumed from the earth, and let the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Mariana. So this is not a psalm of lamentation, is it? So what is it that you're hearing from these words? Praise. Praise, Praise, yeah. Gratitude. Gratitude, yeah. Start with him. <clears throat> Thankfulness, yeah. Kind of a wonder at creation. So um, Barbara Wolf, she took that psalm and then she made 10 different images to encompass this series. I'm just going to show you four of them. And we're going to try to identify where in the psalm. So I apologize to those who are joining us online. But if you have a Bible handy, you can look at Psalm 104. Um, but you have the text in front of you. So we're going to try to identify what it is she's capturing in these images. So, and the mountains rose. So, isn't that gorgeous? Just the uh, gold and the, so let me read you a little bit about her. So um, it's made from uh, pigments and precious metals on goat skin. Oh, yeah, so did anyone find out where Mountains of Roses? Early on. Is that eight and seven stanza maybe? They rose up to the mountains. Yep, that's it. So verses five to eight, she's uh, illustrating here. All right, here's the next one. Among the branches they sing. Well, that's the bird thing. By the streams, the birds of the air have their habitation. They sing among the branches. So that's verse 12. Is that then Hebrew writing in the gold? Yes. Mm -hmm. ah. Is it readable? Uh, not for me. Maybe for she's fine. I will ask her. Uh, yeah, my Hebrew has looks like the runic stuff on the Yeah, screen. and you don't read left from right, you read Hebrew right from left. Yeah, this is there's an aleph there sticking up out of the that's all about all I can. Yeah, I can identify letters, but I can't tell you what it says. But isn't that gorgeous? The verse, yeah, and this one. So, this is the Leviathan, the creature from the deep, whom you hast formed. And that was towards the end. So that's what a Leviathan is, a whale? No, not necessarily. Kind of a large creature in the ocean. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's on the back part. Yep. Yonder in the sea, great and wide, mm -hmm. creeping things innumerable. Yeah, living those long ships and Leviathan that you form to sport. Yeah. Uh, and that's such a great image, you know, the Leviathan sporting in what God has created in the ocean, you know, just frolicking and having fun. Uh, and just look at all of those creatures. Yeah. So oh, I forgot to share with you how she got her start. 
Um, so she spent many years illustrating natural science textbooks, oh, wow. honing her eye to see and her hands to reproduce the minuscule details of different plant, animal, and insect species. And then in the early 2000s, on a whim, she took a course on medieval manuscript illumination, uh, learning, among other things, how to work with all of these, uh, with the parchment, the goat skin, the mineral pigments, and precious metal leaf, kind of silver, mm. gold, and platinum. And she says it changed her life. So you never know on a whim what you might do. <laughs> it could change your life. So she has since devoted the bulk of her time to illuminating Jewish texts, a focus made possible by individual and institutional patrons. So this series for Psalm um, 104 was commissioned by philanthropist Daniel and Joanna Rose, and then donated to the Morgan Library and Museum in New York City. And then I have one more for you, is this one, you renew the face of the earth. Um, yeah, and again, as Marianne has pointed out, the Hebrew uh, words, um, you yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't try to figure out what those words, it probably is you renew the face of the earth, uh, for this one anyway. 30. Did you find it? 30. Psalm thir or verse 30, yep, thank you, great, and you renew the face of the earth. Oh, yeah. It's just gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah. And thanks be to God that, um, you know, God didn't just make and create and then set it apart and, you know, watch from a distance, but God is integrally uh, and intimately involved in renewing creation and renewing our lives. When you told her story, I couldn't help but think, and he leaded me beside the parchment and the goat skin. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. You just never know how people, um, you know, are, are guided by God and just, you know, listening and following that nudge and saying, yes, okay, why don't I try this? Wow. And, yeah, I mean, they're just spectacular. Just like the snake. So this is four of them out of ten. You can probably go online if you want to Google her name and look at the other ones. We're doing on time here. Okay, so the next one Psalm we're going to look at is Psalm 85, and this is just verses 10 to 11 um, in two different versions. So another thing I encourage you to do is not just read one version of the Bible, one translation, but read multiple ones because different things, different uh, words will be translated uh, in a slightly different way or the words will be rearranged in a way that might hit you. So uh, the New Revised Standard Version, which is what um, most scholars typically use and what we have in the pews, says steadfast love and faithfulness will meet, righteousness and peace will kiss each other, faithfulness will spring up from the ground, and righteousness will look down from the sky. Mm -hmm. And then the other version is from the message, Eugene Peterson's um, paraphrase of the Bible, both the New, Old and the New Testaments. Love and truth meet in the street, Right living and whole living, embrace and kiss. Truth sprouts green from the ground. Right living pours down from the skies. So you can see instead of righteousness, he has right living, um, whole living instead of peace, and then love instead of steadfast love and truth instead of the faithfulness. And that they meet in the street. Uh, it's just, it's kind of gets to our uh, experience of life. I love that phrase, righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? Awesome. Yeah. Uh, we have an order of service for our Wednesday morning prayer communion service for chapel that uses this. And yeah, every time I read it, it's, just, it's lovely, isn't it? Yeah, it's just that coming together. So Psalm 85, uh, this is illustrated by um, the painter John August Swanson. Uh, he's visualizing the poetry of the words, um, but not just those, but he took you the whole psalm. Um, and I don't know if we have time to read that. Um, sure. Sure, okay. Did Wayne want to read that one? Are you reading 85? I guess not. Okay, <laughs> I'll read 85. Yes, you can. Uh, Lord, you were favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You pardoned all their sin. You withdrew all your wrath. You turned from your hot anger. Restore us again, O God of our salvation, and put away your indignation toward us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Will you not revive us again so that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak. 
for he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him. And fear there, you want to think of uh, reverence. You know, it's not we're trembling in fear because God's going to do something terrible, but we're in awe, we're in reverence and fear of him, that his glory may dwell in the land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet, righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go beyond before him and will make a path for his steps. So if you were going to be an artist for these words, what is it that you would want to lift up? And what do you see in his painting? Just the... Uh... That painting has such a feel of fabric. Like a oh, quilt. Yeah, the fabric and the texture really of the good. Psalms. It's yeah. Amazing what she's done with acrylics there. Yeah. Please. You really get a sense of the um, the abundance, I think, of God's creation, because the the colors are not realistic, are they? I mean, it's very fanciful, but it's it just shows you the beauty, the joy that promise. Uh, and here he's got justice shall look down from the heavens. That that interaction, the relationship with God to God's creation and people. So you can see throughout it, there are some of the text is woven in. Um, so he's trying to convey the feelings of the verses. Um, and he started with sketches in the 1980s and then he finished this acrylic painting in 1990. Um, and this is what the artist wrote, wrote about it. So um, each year when the verses from Psalm 85 were read in the liturgical service, I would visualize the poetry of the words, the hope they made me feel about living, the opportunity to hear and read these words annually, revisiting them like old friends refreshes the spirit. <laughs> I love that, that's great. Cause that is how scripture is for us. Isn't it when it comes around again or we're reading it for our own devotions. During the 1980s, I made many ink sketches of the images that these words sparked in me. I wanted to paint an image that conveyed the feelings I have from these verses. This was a challenge for me. My sketches incorporated different events into one large landscape, as there are several visual ideas in these four short verses. And then he completed it. So it's an ink drawing um, and then acrylic paint on it. There's a little child up in that tree. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Into the birds. birds. Mm -hmm. um, there is a video that he shares. It's kind of what I just shared with you. So I think we don't really have time for that today. Um, if you're interested, again, you can Google that when you get home. Uh, and there was a wonderful uh, interview with the artist. Yeah. So that's um, Mr. Swanson. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted to, and this is this is the, goes back to the Lamentations. Um, Anne Weems, who some of you may know, is an incredible um, poet. So gifted and prodigious author. She's a Presbyterian poet laureate for one stretch. Her father was a Presbyterian minister and her mother was a lawyer and an author. She published seven books. Uh, her poems were meant to be used as liturgy and worship in personal devotions and in discussions. And she passed away in 2016 uh, at the age of 81. And she, sadly, she had a brain tumor. Um, but she has a very um, sorrowful um, life in many ways. So her son, he, on his 21st birthday, was out. And uh, his name was Todd. And he, uh, here, I, I put it in here, uh, and he was murdered that night. And the person who killed him is, is in prison. Um, but she, you know, was asked in interviews, you know, how do you go on? And she says, I don't think the pain will ever go away. So it's something, again, you, you have to find a way to carry with you and integrate into your own life. But it never goes away. It's always there. Uh, and Walter Brueggemann, who you heard Leah mention in the sermon, was a good friend of Anne Weems. So he, at some point, suggested that she write psalms of lament as she was doing the grieving process. And it's a long process, years, when you lose someone close to you like that, especially a child. 
Um, so she did that um, and she would write, you know, one or two and then she'd slam them into a drawer. And then, you know, weeks would go by and she'd write some more. And finally she got to a point where she had all these psal um, psalms of lament um, and she no longer had to slam the drawer shut. Uh, and she was able to gather them up and, um, and here's her book, Psalms of Lament. So this is from our library. So you can take it out. And she's also written um, other books. So she has um, a set of poetry that goes with um, Easter um, and Lent, and then also one for Advent and Christmas, uh, among other times of the year and just life experiences. Um, so in her um, introduction here, she says in the book, there is no salvation in self-help books. The help we need as uh, is far beyond self. Our only hope is to march ourselves to the throne of God and in loud lament, cry out the pain that lives in our souls. Uh, and that's mm -hmm. what Leah was lifting up today with the, her uh, message and with today's worship service, just the, the cries that come up out of um, our life experiences. So this is her, um, one of the, the prayers of lament that she wrote after her son's death. So I'll read it to you. It says, oh God, why do you leave me face down in my memories, eyes wide open, every nerve exposed? Why do you leave me all alone in the house of memories? Open the door, oh God, burst in and seize me from the hell of her memory, remembering the smile, the voice, the whistle, the love. Take me from here, oh God, Please be merciful, blot out the memories, pick me up from the mire of pain, lead me away to the place of peace, for you are my God, and you will not, you will not abandon me. And boy, does that speak to the trust of God's presence and strength with us. Um, and I guess, I don't know what your experience has been, but at times when I've lost, you know, a parent or, or something terrible has happened in my life, you have those initial memories. And then gradually the really negative memories start to fade and you can fill in, you know, the really joyous, pleasant memories that you have of a parent or of someone that you have lost. But lost. Um, but it is, it's that, you know, blotting out of some memories. It, it's hard. Um, to That's remember. what she means by that, because I, I didn't quite understand. I, I think so, yeah. What do others think? Uh, did, did you have thoughts, me? Yeah, I agree, because, you know, people will say, you know, when you've got a loved one that's dying and you're going through the horrible stages with them, and you think, I'll never get these images out of my head. Mm -hmm. But gradually, the other images surface, mm -hmm. and they no longer predominate. So that's what she means by blotting mm -hmm. out the bad memories, not the good memories. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's because at first you think you'll never get that particular one that disturbed you so much out of your head. Yeah. I've never had this happen, but you know, that phone call that comes in the middle of the night or the knock at the door and the police officers are there and like they have to tell you bad news. And those are probably memories that are really hard to to soften and have them probably takes a long time to have them fade to the background. So I would commend Ann Weems to you, um, and if you're looking, not everyone wants to read a whole book of songs of lament, <laughs> but if you're curious, uh, or you know, you do want to, you know, find words that give voice to what you're experiencing, she's a good one. So and then, um, especially because Marianne is here, she loves children's literature. So this is another book from our library, Psalms for Young Children. So the biblical Psalms describe a whole range of emotions from joy and wonder to sadness and regret. So this collection of Psalms paraphrased for young readers uses simple yet powerful imagery to help children express their feelings. So this is Psalm 130 that Leah is gonna preach on next week. When I have done something wrong, I wait for you to forgive me, God. I am sure you will comfort me. I believe in you, God, even more than I believe that tomorrow will come. And you see in the image, a little boy was sitting on a whale <laughs> with a star and yeah, the moon, I guess, or a star shining on him. And then this is Psalm 13, which I think you looked at in one of the previous weeks. Sometimes when I'm very sad, I worry that you will forget about me, God. But then I remember that you, will, that you love me always. So I will sing and be happy. And that is your last class, is singing and being happy as you return to the praise, to the, the reorientation. And uh, Tim Evers will be here for that. 
Um, I am going to preach on the 28th Psalm 145. Um, it's a psalm of praise and an acrostic poem. And I know Sue Fry told you what an acrostic poem is, the song, remember? Each, the start, first word of each verse is a letter of the alphabet, either of it, right? So it's a prominent psalm used four times in the current common lectionary. Psalm 145 is the overture to the final movement of the psalms, and we're moving back into the praise. Uh, the next five psalms all open and close with Alleluia. And at its end, the David of the Psalms promises, my mouth will speak the praise of the Lord. So we start the, the book of Psalms with praise. And we go through that disorientation with cries of lament. And then we get out the other side to our Psalms of praise again. So any closing reflections? Um, do any of you use the Psalms to pray on a daily basis? You do, yeah. And it's great, there's a... Um, a version at least of the message, I'm sure there are other versions, which take uh, a psalm and then pair it with um, a, a piece of either the Old Testament and then I think of the New Testament. So you can go through the year and read a psalm, Old Testament, New Testament selection, um, and kind of cover the whole Bible that way, as opposed to, I don't know if you've ever tried to start at Genesis yeah. and read it. That's hard to do, because you get mired in like in Numbers and yeah. <laughs> Lamentations and Leviticus. You're like, wow. <laughs> so uh, if, if you take it in a different um, arrangement, you may find that it speaks to you in a way that you can continue going through it. Or, you know, come to a study like this as you work through a book and really dive deep into better understanding what was going on and the historical context and the setting. Um, so, you know, at, next week when Sue Fry is back here, <laughs> if there's anything that you want to learn in particular, she's got two more weeks to share with you. So if you have questions for her. Um, and any final comments or... Thank you all so much for coming. It's always a joy. I like the visuals that you've showed us yes. because that helps us visual learners yeah. put that thing together. Thank mm -hmm. you. Especially Barbara Wolf. I just loved hers. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, I am an advocate of children's books. Yeah, I know you are. I went yeah. to one seminar and the gentleman who did it said he absolutely believes children's books are grown ups mm -hmm. because it hits at the core of the reason why you're reading that book. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, it simplifies the language so you don't get distracted uh, with some of the words. Yeah. yeah, the one he did was just sidebar was about a balloon with a string, and it was a kid's story. But then at the end, the question to the grown-ups is, "Where is your string? Who's holding on to your string? Mm -hmm. you know, what what visual piece is that?" Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So next week is week six, um, and out of the depths. So heart cries to God will be Dr. Sue Fry. And then I just invite you to join me for our closing litter lit to me. Um, someone want to be our leader? Would you like me to be the leader? I'll be the leader. You all be the people. And everyone online too also, please join us. All right, let's pray. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the, May Lord, the Lord rejoice in his works. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have been. May my meditation be pleasing to God, for I rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so thank you all so much. And have a wonderful afternoon. And come back next Sunday. So Dr. Sue Rod will be here to the 21st and then finishing up on the 28th.